Hello and welcome back to Podcast School. This, as always, is a NA2 Technology and Design video podcast and today we're going to look at feedback amplifiers. So in this podcast then we're going to take a look at the following. It's going to be based on operational amplifiers of course. So we're going to look at amplification, inverting inputs, non-inverting inputs and what they are. We're going to see how negative feedback can be used in inverting gain and also in non-inverting gain. And we're going to take a look at something called the difference amplifier. But first just a little bit of revision perhaps. What I'm going to do is show you a system block diagram again. And remember all systems normally have inputs. They do some processing on those inputs and they normally do something with outputs. In other words, they turn something on, some physical thing like a motor or lights perhaps. Not all systems though have feedback. Feedback is when the some information about the output is uh, given and translated back into the input in order for uh, the process to adjust the output second time around the loop. All right. I've said, if you look up here, I've said, uh, well, I'll just read this through quickly. You, uh, the up amp as a comparator is useful. We've talked about this before because it simply amplifies a small input voltage to produce a maximum output voltage. You saw that in the last podcast. This is open as op this is known as open loop gain. Now, using negative feedback, we can uh, gain a greater control of the up amp so that we can amplify the input signals by different amounts. So this is what we're going to look at in this podcast. And I've said there that negative feedback works by feeding back some of the output of the op amp to the inverting input. Okay, so I describe this in terms of a general system, but now we're going to take a look at how this model uh, can be represented in op amps and how the feedback from the output can be fed back into the inverting input of the, of the op amp. Okay. Have a look at this. Here is our op amp. And what I've said there is, if we feed back some of the information from the output back to the inverting input, we can we can do something very useful. Okay. Again, by using negative feedback, we can control the amount of gain in a circuit. Now, I'll just have a look at this diagram quickly. You'll notice that uh, there's the red input here. That's denoted by the red blob. And something very strange has happened. Our output is much greater. In other words, it's been amplified. Now, it's been amplified by roughly, well, just a bit more than three. So it's got an amplification of three or a gain of three. Now, before, when we looked at open loop gain, we couldn't control that gain. It was either right up against the voltage rails, the output, uh, at plus plus uh, volts or plus supply or right down against zero or negative supply but now this time by using this negative feedback we can control this gain so that our waveform is recognizable as at, at the output just amplified okay so let's see how we can do that first of all just as an overview there are two ways to do this there's something called the inverting amplifier and you'll notice that the input is basically fed into the inverting input. And we've got two resistors, one called RF or the feedback resistor connecting between the output and back into the inverting input and an input resistor, RI. That's the inverting amplifier. And we also have a non-inverting amplifier. And you'll see that it's quite different. Its feedback, amp uh, feedback resistor is also c connected between the output and the inverting input. But this time the input itself is going into the non-inverting input. In fact, if we looked at the output of the inverting amplifier, we would see that it was actually the, um, it was reversed in polarity to the input. Whereas the non-inverting amplifier does not do that. We'll see this a bit clearer in a second. 
So here we have the inverting amplifier. I said there, as the name suggests, the inverting amplifier circuit will invert the polarity of the output to, uh, to that of the input. Okay, said that already. Note that the minus sign in the formula for the gain A, and there is the formula. So the gain A is given by minus the value of the feedback resistor, RF, divided by the value of the, of the input resistor, RI. As I've said, the output polarity, in other words, if our input, oh, I'll try and draw it here, if our input was like that, not too sure how clear this is going to be, then our output would actually be the opposite with its amplification. So that's what I mean by reverse polarity. Okay. So that's the inverting amplifier gain given by minus RF divided by RI. And indeed, if you wanted to find out what the output voltage would be, you just got to multiply this gain by the input voltage. Now, the non-inverting amplifier. Again, a little bit different in the fact that the RF is fed back. Uh, sorry, it's fed back as before, but the input has gone straight into the non-inverting input. I've said there that with the non-inverting amplifier, the output polarity is the same. So we don't have that reverse polarity that we had before. And this time, the non-inverting gain is given by 1 plus the feedback, uh, or sorry, the size of the feedback resistor, RF, divided by RI. So this time, it's this one divided by this one, no minus sign this time, it's just 1 plus that, uh, that division. Okay, and that is the gain for the non-inverting amplifier. And of course, to find the output voltage, you simply multiply that gain by the input. Last but not least today, we have the difference amplifier. And it is shown here. Again, it uses feedback resistor RF uh, and input resistors R1. It also has another uh, feedback resistor uh, connected to the, the non-inverting input down to ground. I've said there that in a difference amplifier, the voltage difference between V1 and V2 is multiplied by a gain given by RF divided by R1. So this time I've given you the actual output voltage. So the gain there is... Uh, a is RF divided by R1. And then, of course, V out is you've got to multiply that gain by the uh, difference between V2 and V1. Okay. In some ways, this is almost back to the, the open loop gain, except that we can control the gain this time by the feedback resistors RF and R1. Okay, I hope all that made sense. If you um, want to rewind the podcast, go ahead, do so. Don't forget, you can watch this as many times as you like. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to email me at info at podcastschool.net. Okay, until next time then, bye-bye.